Meet Jim. Jim works for a large original equipment manufacturer. Jim has a big job. He's responsible for his company's supply chain and for anything that goes wrong in that chain. Jim just learned that on a recent request for a quotation for machined parts, 25% of the items were no bids. He worries that he's paying too much for his parts because his part suppliers buy raw material in small quantities from multiple sources. The number of his part suppliers keeps growing and is becoming harder to manage. To compound Jim's problems, he has three sites that buy an identical part, but they purchase that part using different part numbers. Jim has an epiphany. He can solve these problems, but he needs better information. He needs visibility into the raw materials and off-the-shelf components that go into his parts and the manufacturing capabilities and processes used to make them. He also needs a better way to recognize equivalent parts with different part numbers so that he doesn't have to source them multiple times. Raw material costs represent 30 to 60% of the cost of his parts and the complexity of his supply chain puts him at a disadvantage relative to his competitors. Jim wants his supply chain to win. Jim understands that knowing the raw materials used to make the parts that go into his products is vital. Without visibility into the raw materials supply chain, Jim realizes that price and schedule surety will be nearly impossible to achieve. That night, Jim dreamt about how his life would be if he had visibility into the attributes of his parts. I could send an RFQ and match part attributes to supplier capabilities. I would know what raw materials were common across my extended supply chain and could leverage aggregate volumes for cost reduction. I could use bill of material visibility to track and even centralize the collection of scrap from all my sites and sub-tier suppliers. I'd know what special processes like heat treat and plating were common between my Tier 1 through Tier N part manufacturers. I'd know what percentage of finished part costs are directly related to the raw material used to produce the part so I could improve negotiations. The next day at the office, Jim calls a high-priority meeting. He explains the idea, but no one knows where to start. How do we obtain detailed information about all of the materials and processes that go into our parts quickly and accurately, especially when all or some of our parts are made by outside subcontractors? Joe from IT suggests that they integrate data from their ERP, CAD, or other product data management systems. Brad from Supply Chain politely points out that the information in those systems is often incomplete or inaccurate, especially for parts designed a long time ago or for parts manufactured by subcontractors and where hidden factory considerations may come into play. Sally suggests that they ask their part suppliers to share their bills of material. Brad again politely points out that part manufacturers would be reluctant to share this information and even if they do, they will not all call out materials in exactly the same way. Each will use their own unique nomenclature or taxonomy, making the combining of data maddeningly difficult, time-consuming, and expensive. Raj from Engineering suggests that their own engineers could do material takeoffs directly from engineering drawings. Once again, Brad points out that the problem is that this would not be the best use of internal resources, and even if it was, it would be a slow and expensive process. Chuck suggests hiring the smart engineers at Supply Dynamics to perform something they call part attribute characterization. Part attribute characterization is a proprietary software-enabled process in which critical information associated with a customer's parts and assemblies is documented. This is done using digital blueprints in PDF format, CAD models, or other engineering data provided by the customer. It's a fast, accurate, secure, and affordable way to provide the visibility Jim needs to drive results. Jim will finally be able to make the kinds of proactive decisions that his company requires.